Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2016 State of the County Address featuring our own DeKalb County Interim CEO, Lee May. It is my honor and privilege to present to you our Mistress of Ceremonies this evening, none other than WSB-TV anchor, Sophia Choi. Good evening, and I want to welcome you all myself to the 2016 State of the County Address featuring DeKalb Interim CEO, Lee May. My name is Sophia Choi. I'm an anchor and reporter at WSB-TV Channel 2 Action News. But more importantly for tonight's purposes, I'm serving as your MC, and I'm so thrilled to be here. Before we go any further, please give another round of applause to our musical guest, saxophonist Ron James. And now we will have the presentation of colors by the Southwest DeKalb ROTC, followed by the national anthem performed by Kara Mahoney. And at this time, please stand for the presentation of colors. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight over ramparts we ride were so gallantly seen and the rockets ray glare the bombs bursting in air came through through the night that 
Thank you. You may be seated. Let's give a special thank you to the South of DeKalb ROTC and Kara Mahoney for that brilliant performance. And now we welcome Minister Kariana Turner for our invocation. Please bow your heads. To the God of all flesh, the maker and creator of all things, Father, we thank you tonight for your presence, not just in this room, but we thank you for your leadership and your guidance as a light in DeKalb County. Father, tonight we ask that you would continue to lead and guide our interim CEO and his family. We thank you for the leadership of our board of commissioners and every director, every employee that makes this county everything that it is. Father, we ask that you would continue to lead, to guide, and to order every step as we pursue greater heights and a brighter future for a county that you have assigned to do wonderful things in the earth. We thank you for every child. We thank you for every parent, for every grandparent, every person that works every single day to ensure that this is a county that people would love to live in. We are grateful for your presence. We're grateful for your guidance, and we are grateful for your leadership. God bless the United States, and God bless DeKalb County. Thank you to Min Minister Kariana Turner. And now it's time to hear from our uh, musical selection again from Ron James, our saxophonist.
Mr. James, that is talent. Wasn't he great? To bring our keynote speaker to the stage, I'd first like to introduce you to Presiding Officer Larry Johnson. Dr. Larry Johnson was elected to DeKalb's third district as commissioner in November 2002 with overwhelming support from the community. He is one of the youngest commissioners elected to serve on the DeKalb Board of Commissioners. He has represented District 3 for more than 13 years and has served five years as presiding officer of the DeKalb County Board of Commissioners. Please welcome presiding officer Larry Johnson. Good evening, DeKalb County. How are you doing tonight? This is a great night for us to be here, and, and, and it gives me great honor to introduce what I think is a, is a great man who's, who's done great things, has blazed great trails here in DeKalb County. But before I do that, I would like to just acknowledge and have them to all stand up, our elected officials who are in the house. Come on, electors. Our judges, solicitor, our congressman, Hank Johnson, Marita Johnson, Sharon Barnes Sutton, all our commissioners and judges, just want to thank you all for being a part of this um, event who is uh, greatly deserved. I'm honored to introduce our keynote speaker. It's our interim CEO, Lee May. I've known him longer than he's been in office. Uh, we, we met a long time ago. Uh, one of the stories that we laugh about is that I met him way in Atlanta at Adamsville Recreation Center. He was focusing on health care at the time, and I was doing an event over there around health and wellness. And I had a chance to sit down and, and talk to him and engage him in what he was planning on doing. And I was glad to know that he was a DeKalb County resident who was serious about the business of serving. And he has a servant leadership heart. He was appointed our interim chief executive officer by the governor, Nathan Deal, in 2013 to run the day-to-day -day operations of this $1.3 billion government. He has done a great job at building consensus and moving us forward as a county doing some, some tough times. And that's why I really appreciate him. He's been collaborative. He's also been a consensus builder because running the day-to-day -day operations and, deal, and then have to deal with six or seven other commissioners is not an easy job. And he has shown through his uh, patience, through his perseverance, great leadership in making that happen by focusing on the areas of public safety We've had a couple of great classes of firefighters and, and police officers under his watch. He's helped to make DeKalb County a safer uh, community. Also economic development and business growth. Our plan for economic development has uh, come up under his watch and also various projects that we are focusing on here in DeKalb County. The beautification initiatives is empowerment to youth and children. He started the, the youth department that we now have that's uh, located here at the county to focus specifically on young people, on building their talents, abilities, and gifts to make things happen for our youth here in our community. And he's also enhanced government efficiency. I mean, some of the departments have been merged, different type of performance measures have been done so we can get better, better accountability to the residents that we serve, that we can show outcomes in making things happen. He served as our presiding officer and also as chairman of the Budget and Finance Committee as well. He was elected May of, of July, I'm sorry, I'm saying May and in July, but he, CEO May was elected in July of 2006 to take, on, take the place of our Congressman, Hank Johnson, who is with us tonight. He's a member of the clergy. Lee has built the bridge between the faith and politics in his book called My God, My Politics, a discussion on faith and politics. And commission, um, CEO May, uh, uses his personal experience to bring clarity to lay people so he can so we can understand how faith and politics work together. He's the son of a pastor, a graduate from Emory University Candler School of Theology, holds a master's degree in divinity, uh, a degree, a bachelor's degree in science from the historic Clark Atlanta University. He's married to his college sweetheart, Robin, and is a proud father of three daughters, Ryan, Reagan, and Riley. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so excited. This may be his last state of the county address, but this is not the last time we will hear from our CEO, Lee May. I want us to please join him in a round of thunderous applause to a job well done to our CEO, Lee May. Let's give him a great hand. Yes. 
Thank you. 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 Presiding Officer Johnson, thank you so much for your for your friendship. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for uh, uh, reminding me of that uh, of that event. I had forgotten about that. When you said that, I started thinking, I forgot about that. At that time, I wasn't even thinking about running for office or anything like that. I just wanted to get involved in our community. And I read in the paper, one of our local papers, that he was doing something. And I went over there. And uh, we've been fast friends since then. And, uh, and I appreciate your leadership as well. Uh, I want to thank you all again for joining me here this evening as we reflect on the days behind us and envision the bright road ahead of us, paved with opportunity, with hope, with vision. It's always a great occasion when our leaders come together and join with the community to share in the collective journey uh, that we've been in. And, and before I go too far down the road in this speech, I do want to recognize a number of people and our uh, Presiding Officer Johnson has mentioned a number of them, had them stand up. But again, I want to recognize uh, our Board of Commissioners. Our Presiding Officer has already um, done his introduction, but we also have, I believe, other members. I see one definitely, Commissioner Sharon Barnes Sutton, if you would stand and be acknowledged. Any other commissioners here? All right, so don't take offense of that, other commissioners there. We had a luncheon that they all were there uh, this morning. Oh, Commissioner Marita. Davis Johnson, who I am so excited, has taken over District 5, y'all, and she has done a phenomenal job uh, being in that role. I also want to thank uh, all of the our constitutional officers and other uh, countywide elected officers. Go ahead and stand up again. I know it's, it's, it's not enough. I'm recognizing them again because this is election season, too, you know, and uh, we, have, we have individuals here, uh, Judge J.P., um, uh, J.P. Uh, Boulay, I was about to call you, uh, I'm about to call you Boley. I don't know why. J.P. Boulay, uh, our Solicitor General, Sherry Boston here, our uh, Traffic Court Judges, uh, Story and Ramsey who are here, our uh, Deputy, our Interim Tax Commissioner, Irvin Johnson, who is here, not the basketball player, but you know, the Tax Commissioner here as well. Uh, somebody else stood up I didn't see. I know we got our great Congressman here. Congressman Hank Johnson. Go ahead and stand up, Congressman Johnson. Now, so as Larry mentioned, you know, I wouldn't be in this role. It's funny how things work, but I wouldn't be in this role had he not had a vision to be a member of Congress. And when he had that vision, he stepped out on faith, and, and he had to resign his seat. And lo and behold, I decided to run for that seat, and we both were successful. And I'm so thankful uh, to have known him, and he gives me guidance and wisdom all the time. It's funny how things work. He resigned, I ran and won. Uh, I resigned, his wife ran and won. So I guess when you resign, my wife is next, right? <laughs> I guess that's how it's going to work, right? But uh, and so we do have my beautiful wife here today. My, go ahead, stand up, baby. Robin May, life coach Robin May. Many of you all have heard and known her on her time on Praise 102.5 every Friday on the Katie Bow show and giving life wisdom and telling all my business on the radio because she is a mental health therapist, a counselor, and the love of my life for 14 years now who has given me three beautiful baby girls. And so I'm so thankful for my beautiful wife who has had to endure every up and down that I've had to deal with, you all. And she's been praying for me, and I love you so much, baby. To our executive leadership team. <laughs> to our executive leadership team, we have so many staff members here. I appreciate your work. Uh, we have our uh, COO, our executive assistant, who is here, Zach Williams, other department heads and other county staff. If you work for the county, just, just give me a quick wave. Thank you all so much for being here uh, and the work that you all do. Um, to our wonderful citizens and guests, and uh, we are just so excited to be here. And uh, 2015 was some kind of year, wasn't it? It was some kind of year that tested the resilience, and, the, and, and, and it has helped to shape all of us, right? It was a road that, that, was, that was trying at times. It was a road that, 
that, that, but I believe that is paved with promise. I truly believe that. And I must say that during those 365 days, look, we learned, we grew, we developed into what I believe is a better county. Because what doesn't kill you kind of makes you stronger, right? It, it builds a stronger foundation for us. And I truly believe that's what 2015 has meant to us. But before I go any further, I want you all to, to take a look at this video about some of the things that have happened in 2015 that DCTV has provided for us. A kaleidoscope of families, students, seniors, and small and large businesses from all industries. The cab not only serves as home to more than 700,000 residents, but also a virtual launching pad for development, growth, and prosperity. An eclectic palette rich with cultural diversity, where 64 languages are spoken, this hub of leading science, medical, and technological advancements underwent and overcame a year of challenges, resultant in accomplishment and growth. Indeed, 2015 for DeKalb led to a path where a progressive future and booming development came into one unified focus. We are stronger as a county. Um, our economy is looking good, that's exciting news. Uh, we are governed well here in DeKalb County and we're looking out into the future. DeKalb is a very culturally diverse, exciting international destination for food and flavor, but we also have very southern uh, pieces with Stone Mountain Park, number one attraction in the state of Georgia, Fernbank, Carlos Museum, and then our, one of our strongest assets is our individual communities with our great people, our friendly people, and our culturally internationally diverse people. Home to some of the country's most prominent companies and organizations, the clear vision for this business and education epicenter explodes in its potential for budding entrepreneurs and established businesses alike. We're most active in hiring and being able to, to regentify this area with this facility and being able to continue to add talent in, into this area and uh, look to make DeKalb County a technology centerpiece for not only the Southeast but the entire United States as we continue to grow. It's a region ripe for development and growth sparked by strategic partnerships and the county's first ever strategic plan, all part of the May administration's vision focused on a progressive DeKalb. $304 million worth of private investment has been induced by our primary tool, which is our lease purchase bond program. Uh, when you count jobs that have been created and retained, there have been over 2,000 jobs that have been affiliated with those development projects. And they've been in our core industries as related to our strategic development plan. We look forward to the continuing effort with DeKalb County to build the largest corporate center of Fortune 500 companies in the Southeast United States right here at Perimeter. And while attracting businesses into the county was a priority, so was ensuring quality and cost-effective service delivery to all stakeholders, as demonstrated through the implementation of a clear vision for efficiency, aptly titled, Rolling Forward to One. This is the most dynamic change in service delivery that this county has experienced in a long, long time. And we want to get it right. A clear vision for DeKalb's second to none public safety unit saw expansion with the graduation of police and fire classes in 2015, enhancements with the addition of new equipment, and the grand reopening of a newly constructed fire station. It's a beautiful station. It's uh, full of wonderful, honorable people. So I am just absolutely pleased to be here and uh, take the time to um, just celebrate this grand opening. Our total commitment is to give the resources that are necessary to develop uh, our men and women that keep us safe. And while last year DeKalb saw a reduction in property crime by 22%, the seizure of more than $2.5 million by the narcotics unit and a local clearance rate higher than the national rate in key crime areas. 
The impact of DeKalb's service may best be described by one of the county's youngest residents while cuddling her four-legged friend. I got my He's cold The May administration's clear vision for a better DeKalb promises a well-trained and fortified workforce. Skillfully placing or retaining nearly 3,000 jobs in 2015, DeKalb's Workforce Development Agency offers businesses in the county direct access to a trained workforce, such as this DeKalb High School student turned youngest lineman in the history of Georgia Power, thanks to the work of DeKalb Workforce. What I do makes a difference. It just makes you feel a part of the bigger picture. It connects a big organization who has big labor needs with an organization that does just that. Let's go. Job creation was also a prime opportunity seized through the county's efforts to address an aging infrastructure system. This is the largest uh, program or project that we've had in a couple of decades in the Cab County, uh, maybe even in the Southeast. Construction activities within the CIP have been distributed throughout the county and encompasses all seven commission districts. This project has created nearly 2,000 jobs for people who work in DeKalb County. Many of those jobs are held by DeKalb County residents. The clearer vision for DeKalb also included enrichments to the county's sustainability initiatives. This is one more step down that road of being a real leader and showing the community that we are taking charge. Part of what we have to do is reclaim our communities from uh, trash and use our recycling as an opportunity with our partnership with our schools to make a difference. So I uh, implore you to let's work together. The clearer vision for a better DeKalb includes a continuum of care from infancy through the golden years bolstered by the grand opening of two new senior centers in 2015 alone. I'm 93 years old and I exercise, I go to water aerobics. And a clearer vision for an enriched and healthier DeKalb in 2015 boasted a growing park system. It will, I think, become one of the most popular spaces in uh, this part of DeKalb. And the innovation of a nationally recognized mobile farmer's market. They call it LEAD DeKalb, which stands for Local Efforts to Address Disparities, LEAD. Uh, this cooperative effort is, is one that is really delivering a key service to our residents throughout the county, whether you live in a city or in an unincorporated area. It's that spirit of a collaborative innovation which perhaps best defines the legacy of the Lee May administration and its delivery of a clear, focused vision for the promise of a stronger DeKalb. Let's give it up again for our Emmy Award winning DCTV for putting that video together under the leadership of Ms. Diamond Lewis and her whole DCTV staff. You know, our path to a greater DeKalb at times appear like an uphill climb. But we met that challenge head on and forced ahead and made key decisions that curb areas where issues were present in our county. At times, that uphill climb seemed daunting for all of us. We stayed the course and we weathered the storm. And earlier this year, the GBI continued their review of various areas of concern in our county and found that, and I quote, no new criminal activity allegations that warranted further investigation by the G GBI. That essentially dismissed the claim that our county was fundamentally corrupt. You know, and, and, and that's something that we have to pay attention to. And if the media doesn't talk about it, we have to talk about it. Now, immediately following that, our own district attorney also announced that he had reached that same conclusion. And today, I renew my vow that each and every one of us, to each and every one of us here this evening, that if we have any bad apples in the bunch, that they will be removed.
Now, the GBI and the DA aren't the only ones looking into our county. There's a couple of other agencies looking at us. They're called the credit rating agencies. We have Fitch and Moody's. They are looking at the money. They follow the money. They look at how we're spending our money. And guess what? Since I took office in July of 2013, we have gotten our fund, rainy day fund back to one month of operating reserves. We have improved our credit rating. Today, we've just gotten from Moody's uh, a, a reaffirmation of our credit rating of a double A3. You may not know what that means, but that's good. That's a strong financial foundation. And Fitch as well has, has given us strong uh, markings for, for our finances. While at the same time, we've cut property taxes for the first time in over a decade, you all. That's major. That's something that we have to talk about. And that shows that we have firm, strong foundations. And at the same time, we have given our employees the first across the board pay increase since 2008, over that same period of time. But there is still more to come. In 2015, we also welcomed in two new commissioners, one being here today, Commissioner Marita Davis Johnson and Commissioner Nancy Jester as well to the DeKalb County Board of Commissioners. I, along with their constituents, applaud you all for your leadership and what you really bring to the Board of Commissioners. As they join other board members in really having visionary leadership and making key decisions that will affect not only our right now, but the lives of DeKalb County for years to come. Now, I have three major objectives to accomplish in 2016. So this being my very last State of the County address, it will be short, prayerfully. If you clap, it may be a little faster. <laughs> but, but in 2016, everything that we do must answer this question. Does it make us faster? Does it make us smarter? And does it make us better? So, okay, I'll take that too. Now, now here's the thing. If it doesn't answer the, in, in the affirmative, if it doesn't say yes, then we're simply not interested in it. We must become a faster, smarter, and a better county. We have to become more efficient and more efficient in the things that we do. So. How do we achieve this in 2016? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. In making the cab faster, smarter, and better, I have to start this conversation by talking about SPLOS. Now, what is SPLOS? SPLOS is a special purpose local option sales tax. In November, you will be asked two very important questions. Now, at the top of the ballot, it'll be who you're going to vote for for president. We'll tell you who I'm going to vote for, but we'll have to wait and see. But at the bottom of the ballot, it's going to have two very important questions that if you answer yes, would allow us to address our major capital and infrastructure needs here in this county. Now, I want you to remember this number, 417. 417. That's 417. That's how many miles we are behind in resurfacing our roads right here in DeKalb County. That translates to $176 million. Now, last year alone, our crews uh, refilled 4,457 potholes. I know that number clearly. And that may sound like a good feat. But really what it's saying is that we have a long way to go. Because if you drive down any road in our county, you know we got a lot of work to do on our roads. So. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done, but there's still more work that we will get done. And the truth of the matter is, our current taxing structure and budgetary constraints are literally putting a Band-Aid on a gaping wound. That 1% sales tax will generate nearly $100 million a year, or half a billion dollars over five years. And we can dedicate these funds to address the ongoing backlog of our road resurfacing projects as well as other capital and infrastructure needs, such as fire stations, police precincts, libraries, and other capital needs as you, the citizens, determine are needed. And because of our decades-long commitment to both MARTA 
and Grady, in addition to our current homestead option sales tax, otherwise known as HOST, we are unable to address our aging infrastructure as other counties have been able to do through their own SPLOS. Now your voice and your vote in November will allow us to address these issues proactively and address those capital and infrastructure needs. Now make no mistake about it, we have done a yeoman's job in dealing with our capital needs with our current budgetary uh, commitments. But it all serves as a drop in the bucket toward our growing infrastructure and capital needs and creating and maintaining a sustainable funding mechanism for our infrastructure will help us become faster, smarter, and better. Now here's the thing, along with in, uh, investing in our major infrastructure needs, we also have to invest in one of our most valuable assets in the county, and that's our employees. We must remain competitive in our pay across the board. And this last year, we launched our pay and class study that will help us accomplish this. And once fully implemented, we will be in a better position to attract and retain the best of the best in every part of our county government. I think that was led by our, some of our employees. We need to build a stable police and fire department. And we have to invest in them so that we can protect our investment in them. See, what's happening is other jurisdictions are siphoning off our well-trained employees where the pay is higher. Now, can all of this happen overnight? Absolutely not. But I know the leadership found on the Board of Commissioners will be able to accomplish it with their visionary leadership and understanding of what's important where our 6,000 employees are concerned. Now we all know that no service can be rendered, no paved road, no fire extinguished, no garbage collected or sewer fixed without our incredible workforce and leadership. And here's the key, fair and equitable compensation for all of the cab employees is paramount. The overwhelming majority of our workforce who are dedicated, hardworking and honest deserve fair compensation and we're going to work hard to get that done paying government employees what they are worth will make us faster smarter and it will make us better so i applaud the board of commissioners for stepping up to the plate for some of our first responders and public work employees here recently but we need to be sure that we're treating all county employees fairly and equitably and we're working to do that now. So since I was appointed by the governor nearly two and a half years ago, the quality of life in our communities has been one of my top priorities. And I'm happy to report that we've made significant progress in that respect, but more is in store. We've made major increases in our code enforcement department, increasing our staff from 28 to 52 in the time that we've been in office. We've made substantial headway in our key gateway interchanges throughout our county. We've rethought how we deliver sanitation services and how we pick up trash and recycling, and you made it happen. <laughs> Through our Rolling Forward to One initiative, we'll save millions of dollars annually and protect our environment at the same time. For that, I truly say thank you. Now, we are taking our community beautification efforts to the next level. Now, this past year, we've already launched our litter abatement program by hiring dedicated staff who are solely responsible for picking up litter and debris in our public right-of-ways. That's something that we have never done. And today, I'm happy to announce a newly structured business unit that will focus our beautification efforts in this county in a more comprehensive way. Now this unit will house the current office of Keep the Cab Beautiful, along with this new litter abatement unit, with the mowing unit, code enforcement, and our foreclosure and vacant property registry program, all housed together as one. 
we will have more than 150 employees who are solely responsible for providing this new revamp service. But the bottom line, the bottom line is this. One of our greatest components of our overall quality of life is the aesthetics of our community. See, we, we can't have communities who have horrible curb appeal. We have to have those communities that attract businesses as well as residents. See, communities that attract businesses and residents increase in value, and that adds to the tax base without increasing taxes. So I pledge, I pledge in 2016, here's my pledge, that we will double our efforts to improve the quality of life through a reinvigorated and reorganized Keep the Cab Beautiful, which in turn will make us better. It will make us definitely better. Now, you know you can't talk about quality of life without discussing public safety. Now, when I first was appointed, I did make this vow that I would keep public safety first and forefront of this administration. Now, as promised, we have aggressively hired dedicated men and women to both the police and fire and rescue departments. We have hired more people in the police and fire departments than any time in recent history, and I'm proud of that. And we've had this challenge, though, that we are working on in terms of keeping our men and women in our departments. That's why that paying class study is critical. That's why paying our people is critical to retain them here in DeKalb County. That will help us to slow down attrition in both departments. Since I took this post, we have implemented a police take-home car program and launched a tuition reimbursement program. I'm also proud to announce that we are in the final phase of outfits, outfitting each and every police officer with a police body camera for increased accountability and transparency. <laughs> but we realize that we have to do more, not only to attract, but also to retain the best public safety force in Georgia. So I'd like to thank the board again for who voted and supported the recent raise. Marita, thank you for that vote, for not only our police and fire, but our 911 personnel as well, because they are our first responders. When you call 911, you want the phone to be picked up, and you want somebody there that can dispatch the call quickly. So again, let's give another round of applause to our first responders as well, our men and women in police and fire and rescue, even in our sheriff's department, our marshal's office. Thank you all truly, truly for what you mean to DeKalb County. So as we look to the not so distant future, we have a prime opportunity before us on Memorial Drive. Yes, I'm talking about Memorial Drive again, and I will not let up. Last year, I talked to you about a downtown DeKalb and a vision for reorganizing and right-sizing government operation in new facilities on Memorial Drive. Now, for a minute, we thought we would be doing this in partnership with a new professional soccer team. But the increased geotechnical requirements for that project resulted not in the loss of a soccer team, but instead netted the forward motion, motion of a transformed area uh, that will begin public-private partnerships that really will transform that area. Now, since I announced this concept of a new downtown DeKalb, that's what I'm calling it. And I don't care what you call it. What I want to see is a revitalized Memorial Drive with robust <laughs> business activity, with restaurants and office buildings, no more check cashing places and pawn shops and liquor stores. We want to see revitalization going along Memorial Drive with the new government center as well. Now, we've made significant progress toward the possibility of a real public-private partnership that would bring real meaningful revitalization along this corridor, and we're excited about that. And while economic development is a good thing anywhere, this initiative has the added benefit of streamlining and restructuring the cab government. We'll rid ourselves of old, dilapidated, and large government buildings and parking lots. And we'll replace them, thank you, we'll replace them with more convenient and efficient buildings and structures 
that will also spur development and revitalization along a once thriving corridor in Metro Atlanta. Now it's often said, if you build it, they will come. Well, in life, that isn't simply good enough. We want to strategically design it and build it based upon what works best for the people of DeKalb County. So we want to build it based upon what is fiscally responsible and promises a return on investment for our future. Now, restructuring government is more than just buildings. It's a new way of doing business. And last year, we completed a countywide study conducted by a third party to review our day-to-day -day operations. And in that review, they outlined strategies to become more efficient as a county. Now, this year, we'll be implementing one important aspect of that recommendation, and it's called managed competition. Now, what is managed competition? It's simply a competitive process by which a county will determine the best way of delivering its services. In this process, the public sector will compete against the private sector to see who can best deliver the services most efficiently and at the best cost. Now, let me tell you this. This is not an attempt to outsource everything. It's absolutely not the case. But this will, however, ensure greater operational efficiency and fiscal responsibility. And it's no longer how things have always been done in terms of how we will approach things. It's now about what's right for the county moving forward. So that's our posture. That's our posture. All of these great ideas start with a plan. And during my tenure, we have created DeKalb County's first economic development strategic plan, the first in modern history that we know of. This plan will chart a course for the county for decades to come. And no matter who helms this ship, we now know where we are going and how we will get there. Now, over the course of time, my time as interim CEO, I realize this, that the burden of government does not rest with one person or simply one position, but it's a collective responsibility to monitor, adjust, and address each and every area of concern. Now, that includes every elected official, every employee, and every resident that calls DeKalb County home. Now, the notion of good government is incumbent upon all of us as we chart a course onward and upward. Now, I know and believe that we can do it. I know that we can get there as we forge together for a better decab. And one of my favorite quotes from our president, President Barack Hussein Obama, is this. He says, change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We, we, we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. See, changing the cab doesn't start with, with other people. It starts with you. It starts with each and every one of us seeing the road ahead and understanding that we collectively will fuel the change needed to make us great. Now, I'll be the first to tell you that we have a good story to tell. A story where all people of all backgrounds find opportunity. A safe place to raise a family. A county where a quality education system is coupled with a rich culture and diversity. A place where big business and small business alike can thrive. So you may have recently heard that I decided that I wasn't going to run for CEO. Yeah, that's the big pink elephant in the room. My wife's AK, she likes that. <laughs> this decision took a long time to reach for me. After months of consideration and prayer uh, with my wife and my family, with my pastor and my God, I came to this conclusion that this was the best decision for me and my family. As I answer another call to serve, and many of you all know what that is, now, a lot of people are asking, Lee, what do you plan to accomplish in the remainder of this year? Now, folks, I'll tell you this. I got a lot to do. We have a lot to do in 2016. And my work as your CEO is far, far from over. 
See, we need to pass this flask so that we can have good roads and infrastructure for generations to come. We need to organize and empower and fund a revitalized Keep the Cab Beautiful to ensure that our communities and places where everyone wants to live and play. We need to advance progress along Memorial Drive to include a new government center and infuse hundreds of millions of dollars in private investment in this area. We need to focus on our day-to-day -day operations to maximize efficiency and make sure that we're doing the best with what we have for today and for tomorrow. Now that's a lot to get done. That's a lot to accomplish. And the way that I see it, I could spend my time running for CEO, or I can use this time working as the CEO for meaningful change right here, right now, in our great county. But there is one more thing, one more mountain that I really want us to climb before the end of this year. This deals with our children. Now, over the years, I've worked with the Board of Commissioners to invest more than $26 million annually in resources directly impacting our youth in areas like parks and recreation and libraries to workforce development to cooperative extension. And one of my first initiatives when I was appointed was to create the Office of Youth Services that streamlined our services uh, in DeKalb County to affect those areas directly impacted by uh, our county and our youth. And from its inception, from its inception, this office has supported numerous programs, such as our youth commissioners and our youth leadership academy and our uh, 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 My Brother's Keeper initiative and so many other things that they've been working on, where participants learn to serve and lead as engaged members of our community. And many of them have helped serve in all kind of capacities throughout the year, and I'm thankful for them. But there's one more thing that we want to do because we're just getting started. This year, I'm proud to announce the launch of our pilot after school program created for middle school students in our county at no cost to DeKalb County residents. Now, let me tell you what this thing is going to do. This program will be a partnership between the county, the school system, the faith based and nonprofit organizations collectively wrapping our arms around the most vulnerable segments in our school system. That's our middle schoolers, y'all. It's, it's tough for our middle schools and any traditional school system. But by piloting this initiative, we plan to grow this into an after-school program countywide that will be universal in nature and will be free of charge. We are going to get this thing done. Now, we're going to start small. We're going to start small, and then we're going to grow it, and it's going to take a ton of money that we're going to have to raise to get this done. But partnering with our faith-based community, our churches, our synagogues, our, 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 our temples, with nonprofit organizations on our school system, the federal and state government, we truly can get this done, and we truly can better serve our county by investing in our youth. It's critical, y'all. It's critical. Now, it's a fact that DeKalb County has a great story to tell. We truly sit on the cusp of remarkable developments in our county. And I stand here and remain inspired by young men like Albert Irving and Dillion McGlon. Stand up, you two. I really want to acknowledge the work that they're doing. They are working tirelessly through a, 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 an alliance that they're calling Innovation uh, Alliance of the Cab to teach our young people to embrace technology, coding, science, and mathematics while spurring, while spurring an innovation movement for technology companies and startups. Right here in the cab, I applaud the work that you are doing, and you all are going to hear some great, great things from these two gentlemen. So y'all don't let me down. I'm also proud of our DeKalb Chamber of Commerce, who hosted our luncheon earlier today, where I also gave some comments about the state of our county. They have created an industry council, which strategically fo focuses on building capacities and opportunities 
for small and medium-sized businesses, connecting them to $4 billion, with a B, dollars worth of special construction and support services projects right here in the county. And I remain encouraged, I remain encouraged by all of this work that is going on in our county. I'm excited to celebrate with our seniors uh, who you saw their smiling faces uh, in the video as we opened our brand new facilities, the new Central and South DeKalb Senior Centers. I'm excited about that. And I remain hopeful that the spirit, dedication, and drive of people like the late Mr. Harold Buckley Sr., who served on the martyr board for 30 years representing DeKalb County. He just recently passed. He led the charge for the I-20 rail expansion. And I'm telling you, I'm going to pick up that charge because we're going to make sure we're going to have rail down I-20 going all the way to Stonecrest Mall. I'm telling you, I don't care where I am, I'm going to be fighting that charge. But see, I stand on his shoulders. We stand on his shoulders and the countless leaders who served before him as we take our county to the next level. See, I truly believe 2016 is a year of promise. I believe it with everything in me. And a time to embrace opportunities as we roll up our sleeves and, and stand shoulder to shoulder for meaningful change in our county. In DeKalb County, it's, it's my county. It's your county. It's where we call home and where dreams are born and visions are realized. Ladies and gentlemen, we have 296 days left in this year. Yes, I'm counting. <laughs> and we got a lot of work to do. And I call upon each and every one of you to join me, to work together, to get the job done right and get it done faster, smarter, and better. See, that's my mission <laughs> and my call of action to you. And I stand with you, whether as your CEO, your neighbor, or your friend. Today marks the start of a new era for positive change. And as we, together, write the next chapter in DeKalb's great legacy. I want to thank you all. I want to say God bless you. And may God bless DeKalb County. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you to Interim CEO Lee May. Now, as we prepare to close, I just want to thank you for having me as your mistress of ceremonies. And I'd like to invite up Rabbi Hayim Kasorla from Congregation Orva Shalom for our benediction. And as he makes his way, I just want to let you guys know there are some refreshments in the lobby area, and you're so welcome to enjoy that as you leave this evening. <laughs> Fellow clergy, Fellow citizens of this great city and great county, uh, our CEO, and I was very touched by the words of tribute to your wife because as we all know, behind every good man is an even greater woman. <laughs> so uh, I found this prayer from a Ethiopian Jewish prayer book from Israel and I, I found it very meaningful. It was translated from uh, the, um, the prayer book. Thou art the master and I the servant. Who should have mercy on the servant if not the master? Thou art the creator and I the creature. Who should have mercy on the creature if not the creator? Thou art the strong, and I the weak. Who should have mercy on the weak, if not the strong? Thou art the judge, and I the judged. Who should have mercy on the judged, if not the judge? 
Thou art God, and I man. Who should have mercy on man, if not God? Thou art the sovereign, and I the subject. Who should have mercy on the subject, if not the sovereign? Thou art the innocent, and I the guilty. Who should have mercy on the guilty, if not the innocent? Thou art the living, and I the dying. Who should have mercy on the dying, if not the living? Thou art the pure, and I the impure. Who should have mercy on the impure, if not the pure? Thou art the faithful, and I the faithless. Who should have mercy on the faithless, if not the faithful? Thou art the sustainer, and I the one who falls. Who should have mercy on the fallen, if not the one who sustains? Thou art the rich, and I the poor. Who should have mercy on the poor, if not the rich? Thou art the deliverer, and I the bound. Who should have mercy on the bound, if not the deliverer? Thou art the just, and I the wicked. Who should have mercy on the wicked, if not the just? Thou art the holy, and I the profane. Who should have mercy on the profane, if not the holy? Thou art the shepherd, and I the sheep. Who should have mercy on the sheep, if not the shepherd? Thou art the listener, and I the one who pleads. Who should have mercy on the pleading, if not the one who listens. Thou art the beginning and I the end. Who should have mercy on the end, if not the beginning? So this Shabbat, this Sabbath, throughout synagogues in the entire world, we read from a Torah portion, a biblical portion, the last portion in the book of Exodus, detailing how the ancient Israelites finished constructing the portable sanctuary in the desert. And then Moses blesses them. I'd like to read that blessing to all of us and to all of you. Moses said to the ancient Israelites, he said, may it be God's will that his presence rests in the work of your hands. And they responded, May the pleasantness of the Lord our God be upon us. Establish for us the work of our hands. Oh, establish the work of our hands. May God Almighty bless each and every one of us with peace. Peace upon us, peace upon the entire world. Amen.